For many people, their first encounter with an anaconda might have been the 1997 movie starring Jennifer Lopez and Ice Cube, even though the snakes in that film were mainly animatronic or bad CGI. If you saw it then, it probably gave you a sense of just how terrifying anacondas can be. Rather than feasting on humans, though, in the real world, these large reptiles tend to prey on animals such as wild pigs, deer, birds, and turtles. Oddly enough, when one arguably insane human by the name of Paul Rosalie tried to bait an anaconda into eating him back in 2014, the anaconda wasn't interested at all. The wildlife filmmaker was attempting to test out an experimental snake-proof suit that was supposed to stand up to the bites and constrictive power of the anaconda. However, instead of gobbling up the human meal, the anaconda attempted to flee. Even after dousing himself in pig's blood in an effort to make himself seem more delicious, the best Rosalie managed to achieve was an almost broken arm after the snake wrapped itself tightly around the guy's limb. Rosalie ended up being rescued by his film crew, and the experiment was eventually abandoned. Anacondas have been known to attack animals much larger than themselves, though, including jaguars and even members of the alligator family like caimans. This anaconda has a small caiman in its sights and waits patiently for the perfect opportunity to strike. The snake might be slower on land than it is in water, but when a caiman comes close enough, it takes just a split second for the anaconda to snatch it up, pinning it with its jaws and coiling its muscular body around the helpless prey. Here's a similar takedown in the anaconda's preferred environment, water. The alligator is oblivious to the sneaky serpent, and as soon as it crosses the snake's path, it's all over. Anacondas are non-venomous constrictors, meaning it's not their bite that kills their prey. Rather, the anaconda wraps itself around its captured victim and squeezes the life out of it. Once the prey has succumbed to asphyxiation and its blood supply has been cut off, the snake then swallows it whole. Incredibly, anacondas can sense when an animal's heart has stopped, and their stretchy jaw ligaments allow them to swallow some very large prey. It's no wonder the caimans that share a river with this tight-hugging predator proceed with caution, despite being larger and weighing almost double what an anaconda weighs when both are fully grown. If a caiman does catch sight of an anaconda, which is tricky to do in the murky waters where it submerges itself, a tense standoff often results in the caiman fleeing rather than the snake. That's not to say that the anaconda always wins or that caimans never approach the snakes. Here on land, the caiman has the advantage, especially when the anaconda is tired and hasn't eaten for a while. Despite the fact that an anaconda can survive for weeks between meals due to its slow metabolism, this slow, hungry snake is simply no match for the caiman and its powerful jaws. Sometimes anacondas will flee from a fight, provided they have enough energy to do so. This fascinating encounter took place in Ibera National Park in Argentina, and you can almost sense the two creatures eyeing each other up. The anaconda and the caiman come within inches before the serpent decides to nope out of here. It manages to avoid the caiman's desperate lunge and lives to fight another day. Some interesting facts that weren't in the movie are that in real life, anacondas practice cannibalism and with the larger females, sometimes eating the smaller males. Also, anacondas are nocturnal animals, so they actually do most of their hunting at night. To clarify, although the term anaconda can refer to a group of snakes, it usually refers to one species in particular, which is the green anaconda. More specifically, the green anaconda can be found in swamps, marshes, and slow-moving streams amidst the tropical rainforests that surround the Amazon and Orinoco rivers. They're not exactly the best movers on land, but once they're in the water, they're quick and agile. In fact, their genius, Eunectus, means good swimmer. Anacondas are also designed for stealth with eyes and nasal openings on the top of their heads that allow them to watch their prey while almost completely submerged underwater. Whenever possible, anacondas have a much easier time taking down prey that isn't so deadly, like these capybaras, which are the largest rodents on Earth. The rodent herbivores spend a lot of time near water, which, unfortunately for them, 
brings them into the preferred hunting grounds of anacondas. As we know by now, the capybara's size isn't a deterrence for the snake, but is more of a prize as it offers a larger meal. The green anaconda is well camouflaged, making it difficult to spot even when it does poke its head out of the water to track its dinner. When it gets within striking distance of the capybara, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what happens next. The anaconda latches on with its six rows of teeth and coils itself around the large rodent. And when the capybara's heart stops beating, it's gobbled up whole. An impressive feat that's possible due to the anaconda's stretchy ligaments and mobile joints in their mouths. Contained within an anaconda's upper jaw are two rows of backwards pointing teeth. These teeth can move independently, which helps the snake to bite into its prey and move its head along to fully engulf it. However, particularly large meals can cause a problem for the anaconda. After all, it still needs to breathe. A trick that the snakes have evolved to deal with this is to have their windpipe protrude from their mouths while eating, like a snorkel, which allows them to breathe normally with their mouths full. Considering the fact that it can take an anaconda literally hours to swallow a meal, and weeks or even months to digest it, it's a pretty clever yet necessary skill. Just like any other animal, it sometimes happens that an anaconda will bite off more than it can chew. Take this example where the snake's appetite for beef landed it in a whole lot of trouble. The anaconda thought it could swallow this cow whole, but clearly its eyes were too big for its stomach. It ended up vomiting the cow back out, and there's a real possibility that the oversized meal caused some severe internal damage to the snake. In some cases, snakes have been known to eat prey so big that it ruptures their bellies and they end up dying from the trauma. Speaking of snakes' explosive bodily functions, you may be surprised to know that anacondas give birth to live young. Unlike other species, the eggs hatch while still inside the mother, and the female generally gives birth to between two and three dozen baby anacondas. What's amazing is that from the moment they're born, the baby snakes are completely independent, with the instinct to swim and hunt for prey almost immediately. Their lifespan in the wild is about 10 years but not all of the young survive at birth. As the mother undergoes seven months of fasting and loses up to 30% of its body weight during reproduction, it'll often feast on its eggs and dead young to regain some much needed energy. In terms of conservation status, green anacondas are of least concern, meaning there are plenty of them slithering around in South America right now. However, what's interesting is how human activity is encroaching upon their habitat and causing the snakes to behave in new and interesting ways. While anaconda attacks on humans are very rare, we are interacting more frequently with these enormous beasts. Just check out this footage of an anaconda crossing a busy highway. You can see how slow and cumbersome it is on land compared to in the water, but I still wouldn't want to get up close and personal with one, nor would I want to see one roaming around on a farm, like this one that fancied a bit of free beef. This disturbing footage demonstrates the strength of an anaconda's bite as it locks onto the cow and appears to have shredded its leg. The cow is clearly in a lot of discomfort, and I'm not sure how the encounter ended, but something tells me it wasn't a satisfying conclusion for either animal. I hope that you were satisfied with the conclusion of this video, and if so, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe for more. It's now time for me to slither away into darkness until next time.